Hello everyone, welcome to Study IQ. So we will continue our discussion on economy. Uh, in this session, I'll be dealing with planning. Okay, so we have actually started off with this module planning. And uh, in the first part, in the first session, we have already discussed about the objectives of planning. And then we talked about different types of planning. I've discussed around 14, 15 types of planning. Okay, and then we have talked about planning commission in detail. And then we discussed about National Development Council and also Niti Aayog. The problems with planning commission and how, why it is abolished and why and how Niti Aayog is established established and what is the objectives of Niti Aayog and how is it going to function all these things are actually discussed in the previous session okay so in this session we will be talking about uh, the main strategies of planning okay and then uh, we will see the difference between the development model which was understood or propagated by professor Amartya Kumar Sen and professor Jagdish Bhagavadi we will analyze the difference between both and then we will also briefly talk about Kerala model of development and Gujarat model of development. Okay, so Kerala and Gujarat model and in India broadly, uh, which model we are following is also I'm planning to discuss. And then after that, uh, we'll see some suggestions related to planning. Okay, so this is all about today's discussion. If you have any doubts related to any of our discussions that we have done before or for my previous videos, uh, I have already created a telegram channel. I've told you already. So this is the telegram channel. So you can join there. I'll share all my videos and this is my Instagram ID also. So you can get in touch with me through this Instagram. Okay, so let's get started. So we'll be discussing about strategy of planning. There are two types of strategy basically that is balanced planning and unbalanced planning so when i'm talking about the first one that is a balanced uh, growth strategy i'm talking about not uh, don't take it as planning planning means i'm talking about strategy growth strategy since we are discussing about strategy okay so balanced growth strategy so let me write it down balanced growth strategy Okay, so what is the idea in balanced uh, growth strategy? It is like investment is made in all sectors in the economy. Okay, so the idea is all sectors are interrelated are, and interdependent. So every sector has to develop together. So that is the idea that that is focused in balanced growth strategy. So let me write it down. What is it? Investment. Investment is made in all the sectors so that all sectors should grow in unison unison means coordination okay so the idea is all sectors are interdependent and interrelated so investment have to be made in all the sectors equally so that every sectors will develop in unison in coordination okay what about unbalanced it is the opposite of balanced growth strategy so the second one is unbalanced growth strategy So here uh, you can see the investments will be made uh, in different sectors or it won't be done in all sectors equally. So actually uh, here the idea is you are purposely creating a disequilibrium. Now what is the objective of creating this disequilibrium? When we discussed about demand and supply, I have de in detail I have discussed about this equilibrium, disequilibrium concept and how market is trying to ensure equi equilibrium in economy. Okay, so how market mechanisms are actually ensuring the equilibrium in the economy so all those things we have discussed so when you are creating disequilibrium purposely the idea is market or economy will automatically bring uh, back that equilibrium okay so you are developing certain sectors so some sectors will be left behind so they work and automatically the equilibrium will be reached okay the equilibrium will be managed so specific mechanisms will be there so automatically equilibrium will come so here deliberately or purposely you're actually creating disequilibrium so that is about the strategy okay so let me write it down investment is made in selected high priority areas high priority areas and uh, the you already know during pre-reform period our planning was based on pre pre-reform we were following Mahalanobis model and then we went for LPG the liberalization 
okay and here broadly we call it as rao manmohan model okay now we will see the difference between Amartya Kumar Sen and Professor Jagadish Bhagavadi uh, development model. So first we'll discuss in detail about Professor Amartya Kumar Sen concept of development. Okay, so Professor Amartya Kumar Sen. See for him, uh, economic growth is just a means for social development or social well-being so for him well-being is important and for that matter for any economist it is ultimately the well-being which is important and Amartya Kumar Sen actually considering growth is actually a means to this particular end so social well-being is very important so you should be focusing on social well-being social well-being means education health in all these sectors skill development etc you have to give excessive focus so automatically if it is improving the growth will automatically come so this is the approach of Amartya Kumar Sen or rather we call it as more decentralized approach and bottom-up approach okay so let me write it down economic growth economic growth is just a means so what should be the focus here the focus here should be to enhance the human capabilities and i've already told you human capabilities means education skill development health and all these things okay so the focus should be on enhancing human capabilities like health health education skill development and uh, other basic amenities okay so all these things are considered more important because if you are spending on this and if this is actually improved what will happen ultimately the economic objectives you can make economic growth will be there production will be there okay so all those things will be there but the problem here is the budget deficit will be more you have to sacrifice on this deficit so you have to borrow and you have to invest on social sectors okay so social expenditure will be more so the but the deficit is actually have to be tolerated here okay so the government intervention should be active okay so like uh, various programs like uh, mgnrg etc and who who drafted this program mgnrg it's Pro gene trees okay he is actually a close as a associate of uh, amartya kumar sen only and uh, but deficits as i told you deficits are desirable okay and uh, he also said democracy and decentralization are also considered very important for achieving this okay so democracy democracy and decentralization decentralization are very effect effective in achieving these objectives okay so democracy and decentralization is considered very important and this approach is what we call as bottom up approach so he is following bottom up approach not the trickle down or top to bottom approach trickle down is uh, you focus on growth so automatically everything the social uh, things will be uh, better okay so the the development at the economic level will trickle down to the social level that's the idea in case of top to bottom approach or the trickle down approach here it is a reverse and we have given some examples also for example countries like sri lanka sri lanka cuba okay and uh, in india itself uh, you have given the example of state of kerala okay so if you see the human development index okay so hdi of sri lanka the rank in hdi is actually uh, in 70s okay so last year if you see sri lanka is doing much much better than india india's rank is in 130s okay so if you look between india and sri lanka uh, there is around 50 rank difference between india and sri lanka so that itself is indicating that the well-being in sri lanka is very much higher but obviously the economic development in india and sri lanka is unmatchable so you can con compare that but the level of well-being is very much better in sri lanka okay so that is what uh, all about bottom up approach or the concept of amartya kumar sen so focus on enhancing human capabilities automatically growth will come okay so that's the idea so he is uh, he is talking about spending too much in the 
social side okay so social expenditure is desirable that means fiscal deficit is actually desirable because government have to spend and have to invest in social side then only everything else will come in a better way because ultimately everybody have to focus on well-being every government's objective is well-being so uh, now we will go for professor jagdish bhagwadi professor jagdish bhagwadi so he is actually having a reverse opinion of uh, mr amrit kumar sen actually uh, you see uh, he is a very sharp critic a critic of amrit kumar sen okay so the uh, what he is saying is economic growth is very much desirable for any social development so he is actually focusing on top to bottom approach or trickle down approach okay so what he said is economic growth economic growth is crucial to achieve socio economic objective okay and uh, liberalization should be promoted so lpg should be promoted and uh, in this context government should act as a facilitator okay so market should play the major role and government should act as the facilitator guider okay so it it's like indicative planning government will give incentives disincentives in that way government should facilitate the development process okay so government should act as a facilitator okay so basically government should enable or create a competitive condition so that markets will function properly so that's that's what you mean by government should act as a facilitator so now when you go for lpg automatically there will be economic growth right so economic growth will be there so uh, then when growth is there what will happen ultimately there will be trickle down right so the, this is what we call as top to bottom approach okay so trickle down will be there and your tax revenue will increase right so when the tax revenue will increase what you can do the expenditure on social side social expenditure can increase so these two together contribute or achieve social objective so, so to achieve social objective the economic development is very important economic growth is very important so government should focus on achieving economic objective by acting as a facilitator and provide a competitive condition in the market so once it is achieved uh, the trickle down will happen tax revenue will increase if you remember in the previous module taxation i have told you uh, one of the feature of indian tax system is actually low tax to gdp ratio and we have discussed that 17 percentages are tax to gdp ratio and we have compared it with oecd countries and i have told you 34 percentages in oecd countries and one of the reason that i have told you is actually per capita income is very low per capita income is low means uh, national income is actually low right the gdp is low so if you improve gdp per capita income will improve a per capita income will improve means tax base will improve so more and more people will pay tax so the tax revenue will double or it will more than double right the tax base and up uh, as uh, the tax slabs are in in such a way right so 5 percentage to 20 percentage to 30 percentage all those things we have discussed so that can contribute towards social development so this is the idea of professor jagdish bhagwadi he have given this numbers also see if you go for um, uh, amartya sen model what will happen the budget deficit will increase so th that will debalance the economy destabilize the economy so that will be a big problem you cannot the fiscal deficit is not are uh, so much desirable okay and that will only destabilize the economy and that will affect the entire economy and it will affect the credit rating and all those things secondly it will increase inflation okay so when inflation is there that is also going to create a lot of problems inflation is there means ultimately the purchasing power is actually decreasing even when i am talking about inflation it's not that the price is actually increasing it is the purchasing power is actually reducing so that is how you need to interpret inflation okay so the purchasing power is reducing that means people are suffering secondly when inflation is there it is directly going to affect the growth because rbi is going to increase the rates okay repo rates will be increased and all this actually going to increase the interest rates so the investment will be less and automatically the growth will be compromised so if you are spending too much on the social side fiscal deficit will increase and the assumption that 
spending too much on the social side economic growth will happen is a distinct reality that's what as per professor jagdish bagwadi is a very strong critique of amartya sen okay so if you spend in social sector this is what going to happen that will destabilize economy that lead to inflation that lead to increase in rates and all so development and economic growth will never happen is the idea so i hope you understood but ultimately what is the objective in both case the final ultimate objective is all about well being the means are different for different people okay two people so i hope these two concepts are clear for all of you very much important for your mains and very much more important for your interview if you qualify for civil service mains or if you qualify for civil service mains okay now let's quickly discuss about gujarat model and kerala model of development and we'll discuss if it is possible we'll see which model is desirable and which which model is possible to implement all these things we'll discuss so let's start with gujarat model so gujarat model okay so what are the features of gujarat model of development firstly it is actually very business friendly ease of doing business is one of the most important feature of uh, gujarat model the decision making and everything is faster there is no there is very less red tape system compared to other states okay so first point that i want to write is actually business friendly environment and there is obviously very much economic freedom okay so second one economic freedom third one uh, which i want to tell you is actually uh, related to the governance the good governance okay good governance uh, the use of technology is actually very more e technology okay so e technology is very much more in gujarat and that lead to quick decision making so faster decision making so faster decision making and one very important uh, feature when we discuss the infrastructure so the we, they had a better infrastructure infrastructure and within infrastructure if i go specifically especially power side okay so power and power theft is very much reduced special, special police stations were anyone established in to deal with those cases okay so power is one very important power grids are separated for agriculture purpose domestic purpose industry purpose all these are separated okay then we can talk about roads okay the uh, public private partnership is very much successful in gujarat okay so roads then we can talk about irrigation and when we talk about irrigation drip irrigation is very much successful here so infrastructure side these three is what i need to discuss okay and uh, again see it's not purely capitalist model so what i want to tell you is actually psu is not diluted okay the it actually led to the improvement in ppp only so uh, unlike what people commonly say that it promoted capitalism and it is capitalist model rather the psus are actually retained and reformed okay so psus have a very major role to play in gujarat model and uh, uh, as an outcome of this the growth is very much higher than the national average so this is all about gujarat model so i hope things are clear for you let's move on to kerala model so what are the features in case of kerala model so when we talk about the gujarat model it's related to professor jagdish bagwadi and when we talk about kerala model it's related to amartya sen so in kerala model they are given specific importance or special importance to social side okay so the first point is social service especially education system okay education system is very well developed and that to the government schools the service provided from the government school the quality of the education is very much and far superior compared to any of the government schools in any part of the country okay so that is one of the most important thing that i want to discuss the education system that to uh, the government schools the quality of the education which is provided from the government school okay then uh, we have uh, the health sector or uh, the community health centers okay community health center even even at the village level the health centers or the government uh, hospitals are very well equipped in kerala which you cannot see even in the cities in some other states okay so that is the social uh, development there and then uh, effective decentralization more emphasis on decentralization effective decentralization and more powers are actually given to the local bodies okay so complete deindustrialized uh, decentralization so uh, empowerment of 
of local bodies okay then uh, land reform was also very much successful in kerala if you see there are different types of land reforms in fact i have done a very uh, very good video on land reform i have done two videos related to land reform we have discussed about land reforms in the beginning the first five land reforms and uh, after lpg post post reform land reforms also we have discussed so the five land reform abolition of intermediaries tenancy reforms sealing on land holding and then consolidation of land holding and cooperative farming all these we have discussed and i have told you tenancy reform which it was very very much successful in two states kerala and west bengal because i've told you agriculture is a state subject and state wise legislations is required state wise efforts and implementation is required for the effective implementation of land reform and kerala and west bengal took that initiative because the ruling party there was pro farmer and pro labor so effective land reforms were or land reforms were properly implemented that is also one of the reason for social development in kerala so let me write it that land reforms <coughs> were very much successful so what happened with all these overall quality of life was actually increased and don't, don't forget about foreign trade also it is very near to the cost so foreign trade even much before foreign trade is good okay so foreign trade is actually more so overall the quality of life is very good and it is improved and the well-being of the people in kerala is improved so well-being of people in kerala is actually very very high okay but that is not the case in gujarat in gujarat the growth is high but not the well-being so if you ask me which one is better the ultimate objective of any government or for anything is actually well-being of the people so in that context it is actually kerala which is better but you can't compare kerala and gujarat because if you see during 1947 See, even planning commission will prepare national development report okay so uh, like hdi okay so like hdi uh, uh, the human development index so uh, planning commission pre prepared ndr national development report kerala was in the top in all indicators almost all social indicators kerala was in at the top okay so why you can't make comparison uh, let me tell you these uh, one reason because if you consider this education or literacy okay first thing that i want to discuss is actually literacy so at the time of independence that means in 1947 what was the literacy rate of india so india it was 18 percentage okay and you know what is the literacy rate of kerala kerala it was 47 percentage so there is no point in comparing the education system in kerala and in gujarat or any other part of the country because national average is 18 and close to 3 times is the case in case of kerala okay thanks to christian missionaries and their efforts in kerala secondly if you talk about uh, second important thing is remittances even now also there are remittances from other countries uh, in many states but remittances to kerala was there even before even before the reforms also especially from the gulf countries and if you see most of the people in gulf half of them are actually from kerala among the indian people okay so the remittances from gulf countries was very high so all these actually contributed towards the well being of the people maybe unemployment rates are very high suicide rates are very high but the level of well being is actually very high in kerala so uh, uh, i can't tell which one is better uh, gujarat model there is a growth and all those things is there kerala model uh, social sectors are performing very well but i can't make that as also a comparison because this was a situation at the time of independence so i am not saying which one is better now if you see the previous government the upa government it was very close to kerala model right so they have come up with a lot of social expenditure and uh, social sector initi initiatives like mnrega sarva shiksha abhiyan etc and then what about the next government when nda government came everybody thought they will go for gujarat model of development but in fact actually the spending on social sector is actually increased and improved okay so again the same uh, model the national level uh, model that we are following is actually very close to kerala model where we are focusing excessively on social sectors because i've already told you in many of our discussions 
uh, nobody can replace government market cannot replace government market cannot ensure social justice market cannot remove poverty unless and until there is no demand market is not going to produce anything for you for a beggar if he is hungry nobody is going to produce anything if you have money then only people are ready to produce even food okay so for a beggar if he is hungry nobody is ready to produce food for him because his hunger is not going to make any demand in the society demand means you must be willing and able to buy something so he may be willing but he is not able to buy so that is not going to create demand in the market and nobody is actually going to produce for him so market what i want to tell you is market cannot ensure social justice for that government initiative and infrastructure and spending is actually required okay so now let me give you certain some suggestions for economic planning so that you can incorporate that in your answers so suggestions so suggestions for economic policy so when we have discussed about type of planning we have discussed about indicative planning and i have told you we are more close to indicative planning and our planning and our approach is actually indicative planning that the government will indicate that in these sectors and uh, uh, areas you need to invest by incentives and all okay so what i want to tell you is the indicative nature of economic planning should be further enhanced okay through incentives etc so indicative nature of planning should be further enhanced how it should not be through physical control not through physical control rather through fiscal incentives not physical control this physical control has to be replaced with fiscal incentives see and uh, the second one was actually was there in the economic survey uh, previous year so the default setting of government policies have to be changed like uh, changed from prohibited unless permitted to permitted unless prohibited so don't take it as prohibited unless permitted for everything you need permission that is not the case but it should be permitted if not prohibited so if for a prohibited okay otherwise it is permitted that should be the situation okay so let me write it down the default setting setting of government policy should change from prohibited unless permitted this is what the situation to permitted unless prohibited okay so this should be the default setting of government policy next suggestion you can write us government should create government should create enabling environment enabling environment for the markets through appropriate legislations appropriate legislations regulators rules and regulations okay next one the government or economic planning should identify areas or instances of market failure and design appropriate policy policy measures to rectify them okay so identify the areas where there is a market is a failure and make policies to rectify them next one is again very important cooperative federalism cooperative federalism comma competitive federalism okay so cooperative federalism in center and state are in cooperation competitive federalism is also required because states have to compete among themselves to improve their planning and uh, improve their social indicators and collaborative collaborative federalism 
That means the planning is done in collaboration, center with collaboration with states. The centrally sponsored schemes are example of collaboration. Okay, but it can be uh, the collaboration can be discriminatory also. Center may collaborate more with some states and less with other states like that. That, but whatever it is, co collaborative. It is desirable also. Collaborative federalism should be. Promoted. Okay. So, what all things we have discussed? Uh, the suggestions. Suggestions are this: indicative nature of planning should be uh, given importance. Okay, and it should be uh, further enhanced. Physical control should not be there. Fiscal incentives should be promoted. The default setting of government policy should change from prohibited unless permitted to permitted unless prohibited. And government should create enabling environment for the market through appropriate legislation, regulation, rules, and regulations. Okay, and the government economic planning should identify areas or instances of market failure and design appropriate strategy to rectify them. Cooperative federalism, competitive federalism, and collaborative federalism should be promoted. So this is what we have done. We have talked about Amartya Kumar Sen. We have talked about uh, uh, Professor Jagdish Bhagwati and their approach and their differences. Kerala model, Gujarat model suggestions, and we have started off with balanced and unbalanced approach. And if you have any doubt in any of the discussion that we have done. You can get in touch with me. This is my Instagram ID, Zia Safir, and you can join the Telegram channel also. I'll share all my videos. I've done hundreds of videos on economy and history and in quantitative aptitude also. If you have any doubt in civil service examination, you can get in touch with me, sociology or.